Let's uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the, the Rwanda bill, though, because uh, we've asked many times our audience about this, you know, whether or not we think any flights to Rwanda are ever going to take off. I'm thinking they probably will. But I'm thinking we're talking about a, a few, a handful, not maybe yeah. a few dozen. I don't even think it'll be a few hundred channel migrants who end up on. But I still don't think fundamentally it's going to make a blind bit of difference to the number of people coming to this country. And yet, so much the government's bandwidth is on this. You were a special advisor in the Home Office. So, I mean, to how much focus is on this? And do they genuinely think this is going to make a difference to the problem? I, th I think they do think it's going to make a difference. But, as we've just said, there's no capacity in Rwanda at present. There's no airline to take people over there. And there's no will to get this dealt with properly. And you still haven't got rid of the problem of the 40,000 people who are just sitting there now in limbo. So the government hasn't got any plans for those. They came after the illegal migration bill came in, but before Rwanda, yeah. they're now stuck. So I think the government's in a real mess. I think a flight will go. I think it's going to be a symbolic flight. It might probably be an RAF flights. flight as well, because no yeah. airline wants to get involved. It'll be, you Absolutely. know, hope not hate people or whatever will start a campaign against them. Yeah, and, and I think that's what it'll be, and it'll be in a symbolic uh, flight that goes off, whether it's spring, summer, depends on what... And do they think the that the British people will go, oh, fair enough, job done, I'm yeah. more relaxed about this issue now, <laughs> and then when we see another 500 turn up on a boat every single day throughout the whole of the summer, we've already seen more people coming in the first few months this year yeah. than last year. This is after stopping the boats. But yeah. I mean, they think. do they think we're idiots? They do think we're idiots. Yes, say, they think we're idiots. Is that a rhetorical idiots. question? <laughs> they do think we're idiots, don't they? they Look over here! Look over here! And that's it. They think it's a distraction. They give us something shiny. There's going to be a flight going off and everything's going to be fine. Forgetting that the general public are fed up. It's been two years since this has been announced. We've spent an awful lot of money to send three Home Secretaries and a bunch of journalists. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, I'd love to be on... <laughs> I'd love to be on this side. I always wanted to go to Rwanda. <laughs> it's genuinely yeah. amazing. Make the gorilla experiences exactly. in the jungle. I'd love to do that. Now, but this is the thing. The Lords are saying, look, they don't believe that it is a safe country. We can't guarantee it. You know, the Home Secretary saying it's a safe country isn't necessarily, you know, completely a, a, a safe statement, shall we say. They also want protections for people, for instance, who've worked as interpreters or worked in the British Army uh, overseas. Um, I, I, you know what? I, I can sign up to those, but we also know that the reason why unelected, unaccountable peers and bleeding heart do-goodery types, are, are, they actually want to stop this entire policy altogether. And not just this policy, because it's, a, frankly, a daft policy in lots of ways. They want to stop sort of any policy whatsoever that doesn't treat every single person who comes to this country and says they want to live here as someone who's got a right to live here. This is, this is a fundamental issue. We are in a battle between people who say no, majority of the British people, um, and, and, and these people who seem to have had power for so many years, both in government, in the civil service, lawyers, in the courts, all the charities, who, who seem to think that anyone who is born in a, in a rotten country anywhere can say, yeah, I think I'll go and make my life in Britain. Um, they generally don't seem to understand that that's not going to be acceptable to the British people. I think they understand it's not acceptable. They don't have the will to really do anything about it. And I think there's your problem. Do you think, no, I, see, I think they genuinely, uh, do they you? don't think there's anything. Whenever I ask a lot of these people, you know, give me a number. So, you know, so, well, even if they're economic migrants, whatever, I always say, give me a number. How many people do we take? Even if you have to have legal, safe routes, fine. How many people do we take? They will yeah. never give me a number. Because actually, if they're saying that you know, this man who arrives on this dinghy across the channel has a right to be here, well, then, you know, there's probably another 10 million people who would have the same... If they could get here as well, would have the same right to be here. Well, how many do we take? They never give me a number. No, they don't. And it's really interesting that we don't like to talk about the plight of women and children in places like Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran yeah. who are suffering. They cannot leave the country, but we don't look at those as needing our help. I know that people send over young men because they're the fittest and they can make that journey, but it's the optics of it for the government are spectacularly bad. Why are we not doing more in other countries to help uh, the women come out? Because in Afghanistan, they are treated yeah. so incredibly badly. Their lives are at risk every single day. And we don't talk about that enough. Mm. So I think we need to do that. But with the, with the lawyers, I've, I've worked on cases where 
flights have been stopped from taking foreign national offenders yeah. out of the country. Oh, yeah, and we see this court. again and again. Yeah. Someone, you know, who is a convicted rapist, yeah. someone who's in the country illegally, a convicted rapist or, 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 or some people who's committed horrific crimes, you know, drive-by yeah. shootings, you know, these, these are real cases. And they're on a plane, they're supposed to be taken out. And then, again, oh, someone wants to virtue signal about what... No, yeah. this is awful, and people on the plane refuse to let the plane take off. These people have to be brought back to the country. And you know what they do? They commit another crime. Amazing. I mean, the idea that, you know, if you shoplift in America, you will be out of that country and never be allowed back in again, for goodness sake. But no, no, send us your gang, your gang rapists. Not a problem. I just think, I think the people who are, you know, the bleeding hearters on this, I think they're properly mad on this. Yeah. I mean, but again, they, these are the people who, who think, you know, they're the people who've got, like, you know, citizen of the world in their Twitter bio. They genuinely think... There are no borders, there should be no borders. These aren't migrants, these are people. Yes, of course they are. The solution to people living in horrible countries or the autocratic regimes um, and, and rubbish economic situation is not for everyone to come and live here or in the rest of Western Europe. It is to improve those countries. Why not stay and fight against religion? Why not actually try and improve your own country? Yeah, you see, I know you think I'm a woolly liberal on this, but I agree with you that we cannot take everybody. We have a really good reputation at looking after the most vulnerable, which is absolutely yeah. what we're here for. But not everybody should come here, and we should be able to get rid of the people mm -hmm. who have committed quite heinous crimes yeah. and get them gone for good. Yeah. And again, by the way, when we're talking about this, we're talking about this is illegal migration yeah. a lot of the time because you, you know, you're basically by definition, if you arrive on a channel uh, dinghy, you are now you're illegal. You're not going through the proper routes. Um, but, of course, legal immigration is still also a big issue. And, again, a, a flight going off to Rwanda, even ten flights going off to Rwanda, will not change the situation where people across this country, and this is happening the whole of Europe, it's happening in Ireland as well, people are waking up to this, where large groups of young men are put in a house, put in a hostel at the end of the road, or put in a hotel, or on a barge, wherever it is, and are, are basically, you know, free to roam the streets. People don't know who they are, where they're from. I'm sorry, you know, if you've got a teenage daughter, you clock this stuff very, very quickly. Um, this is happening, and we've seen, you know, small towns and villages having their population, you know, added to by sort of 10% overnight you know, by having these people there. And I'm sorry, these people are not put into the streets of the people who are making the decisions. They live in their lovely, lovely, nice middle-class streets and they don't have hostels in them, they don't have these cheap hotels at the end of the road and they're not living with the consequences of this. No, they're not. And this is why the decision-making process needs to be very quick no. because if you had a quick decision-making process, you wouldn't have to have oh, oh, they on should barges be, and in hotels. Uh, exactly. And I don't think they should be here at all in the first place, but there we are.